Hey guys, this is Clinton aka Phoenix. Welcome back. Today we are going to the bookshelf and we're going to have a full detailed performance review of the PG4, but I'm also going to have a look ahead at the PG5, which is going to be coming out soon. Alright guys, so right off the bat we're going to start having a look at the traction. Alright, so the traction on the PG4 is a spiral pattern. It's a little bit different than the one that they used on the PG3. It's a little less aggressive and it's really just a storytelling method for them to show you what their new strobel air dot unit looks like. Uh, so that unit goes full foot and yeah, you're just getting little dots of air all the way through. That's what they make the strobel board out of in this shoe and they put it on the grip. It works really well. Uh, but not quite as well as the PG3, unfortunately. Uh, still a nice bite on a clean court. Very, you know, very bad on an outdoor court. Um, it just gets torn right through. Um, that being said, on the upcoming PG5, what they've done is they've gone with the heat map traction setup. They basically just took it right off the Colby 9, dropped it on the PG5. Uh, no word yet as if it's going to be the same rubber compound, but it looks like a big improvement coming this year. Alright guys, so the cushioning for the PG4, like I said, it is a full length air dot strobel unit. So this is it here. Uh, like I said, the strobel unit is what they use to connect to the upper and the lower portions of the shoe. So they've just put their air unit right there, very responsive, very quick, very well cushioned. Underneath that, they've got a full length Phylon foam, which works really well. This cushioning setup is top tier. Uh, you're not gonna find a better cushioning setup until you get up around the $200 mark. Uh, this shoe is 145. There's nothing in its class that comes close cushioning wise. Um, that is why they are going to use the exact same cushioning setup in the PG5. There is no difference. Um, it's going to feel pretty much the exact same underfoot. Uh, they've molded out the uh, Phylon a little bit better, uh, which should help maneuverability be a bit better in the PG5, which is looking good. Um, yeah, again, very responsive, very well cushioned, lots of impact protection. This foam really nice and soft. Um, you couldn't ask for more uh, out of a cushion setup at any price point, really. All right, so when it comes to the materials on the upper, you know, they're what you'd expect for a budget shoe. Yeah, it's, it's all right. Uh, I went with this colorway specifically um, because this woven material is a little bit softer than what you're gonna find on the other colorways. Uh, still, I'm not huge on the shroud. I think it's a cool look. I like to have it you know, undone, give a little burst of color. I threw some custom laces in there. Um, but they're so-so. It's nothing to write home about, nothing to complain about. Uh, what you can complain about, though, is the fit. This thing is ridiculously small. Like, it makes me think that Paul George wants to be out there telling everybody he's got a size 17 foot, but really he's only a size 14. Like, it's stupidly small. Um, I bought a 13 in this shoe only because that's what I could get my hands on. I actually had to take the insole out to make it work. Um, luckily the cushioning system's right there so it wasn't too big of a deal but still even with the insole out this thing feels like a 12. Um, I've sold these shoes to a bunch of people who came in saying hey I need an 11. They walked out with a 13. Like you've got to go at least a full size big in these things. It's just stupid how small they are. Um, I don't know what Nike's doing with the sizing on this thing. Um, the PG lines always run a little bit small, but this is just beyond anything you could comprehend. Hopefully they fix that with the PG5. I doubt that they have. Um, I would expect that to fit extremely small as well. Um, but we'll have to wait and see till it comes out. Uh, the materials on the PG5, they, look you know lower end as well um, but they look like they've utilized them better like it's going to offer a little bit more lateral support uh, this shoe was okay with the lateral support um, but where it really killed you was the design of the midsole uh, you know it's just hard there's no 
curvature here. There's no rounding, there's no grip on the side. It's just a harsh 90 degree angle. So if you go, you go out to plant your foot here, if you get here, you're okay. If you come out here, you're gone. And that's not the kind of, you know, you know, support and you know, lateral support I want from a shoe. That's just dangerous in a lot of situations. Um, looks like they fixed that on the PG5. They've rounded it out a lot more. It looks like a much better performing shoe um, because it looks like they've made the fit a lot better on it. Again, materials look pretty comparable. Um, you're getting what you pay for. It's not their top end shoe, um, but it does work well for what it does. So overall, it's a pretty decent shoe to play in the PG4. It's very well cushioned, which I like, but the fit's pretty garbage. It's way too small. Um, you know, maybe I'd like it more if I was able to get a size that actually fit properly. Um, but even that, you know, when I run around in this shoe, it's just super flat right here. And I just find it just, it's, it's a slapper all the way through. It, it doesn't give, you know, a nice uh, gait cycle to it. Like it's not a smooth running transition. It's not the best shoe for that. Um, I still enjoy playing them though. It gave enough lateral support that I wasn't worried. The grip was good enough that I wasn't worried. You know, it was all around $140 shoe. You know, the PG3 well outperformed its price point. Hopefully the PG5 does as well. It really looks like it could. Uh, the PG4 is just a so-so shoe. Um, you're not gonna hate that you bought it. You're not gonna love that you bought it. It's gonna perform well, um, but at least you're gonna be comfortable.